Good evening. Tonight, the pictures that show how a cheap paper lantern caused £6 million damage. Not only that, but the huge fire at the recycling centre required so many engines and firefighters that at one stage, just one crew was left to cover all other incidents in the West Midlands. The fire, which raged in the early hours and for most of yesterday, is under control tonight. Now there's just the mess to clean up. Well, our reporter Holly Lewis is at the site in Smethwick. How long do you think that's likely to take, Holly? Well, Nick, look here, this is really the heart of where the fire was at J Plas in Smethwick. At its height, 200 firefighters, 45 fire engines were here fighting the flames, many of them from Warwickshire and Staffordshire. It could take around three weeks to clear what is now just a huge mess of blackened pl plastic and twisted wire. And as we now know, it was caused by something very simple. Here's Ben Godfrey. This is the moment one stray Chinese lantern dragged a recycling plant through an incinerator. Look closely at the top of the screen. A small white flame appears, moving right to left. It appears to bounce through bales of plastic. Within minutes, one cheap paper lantern caused six million pounds of damage. At first light today came the diggers churning through tons of molten plastic. One firefighter told me it was like a wall of superglue. It was very hard, yes, the, the kind of radiated heat coming from it. If you can, if you're, you know, if the viewers can remember what it's like being at the big bonfire and how hot it is to stand next to it for a few minutes. Our firefighters, have, we've stand that for hours. It's emerged that all but one available fire engine in the West Midlands was fighting this blaze at its height. Just take a look at this. This was a fire that broke down a brick wall. There are still pockets of fire still emerging and there's concern that as some of the debris shifts, it could actually reignite in the wind. The site's owners, j Plas, has made no further comment today. Their neighbours are suffering. We haven't been allowed to move any of the uh, vehicles out of the site. Roy Langford had to send 20 staff home for the week and he's lost £20,000 of revenue. When you know that it's been caused by a Chinese lantern, how does that make you feel? Well, having had a young family myself, I can see the, uh, the pleasure that they bring. But obviously, sending a uh, naked light to wherever you know, uh, we can see the, uh, the results of this. So I wouldn't be in favour at the moment, of course. On Sunday night, the smoke towered 6,000 feet high, blanketing Hawthorne's house. That's it, good mood, Easter. This charity was forced to rearrange support sessions for a hundred people suffering from a mental illness. A lot of the time, what we do, um, the support that we provide, is the only lifeline that our service users get. So it was really important to us to ensure that, that there was some continuity in service and that people weren't left at home um, in, in a state of, I suppose, loneliness and depression. As one shift ended, another started. The progress, though, is such that fire crews could leave this site within 24 hours, leaving investigators to discover more about this small white light in the night sky. Ben Godfrey, BBC Midlands Today, Smethwick. There are still six fire engines here tonight. Firefighters still damping down, checking for pockets of fire. But what about the environmental impact of such a huge fire on the surrounding area? Well, as Ben Sidwell now reports, this is the second major fire at a recycling plant in the West Midlands in just over two weeks. A fire of this magnitude means many different battles. While crews fought to extinguish the flames, another fight was underway to minimise its environmental impact. Today, there were signs of pollution in the Birmingham Canal, but nothing as severe as expected. One of the main reasons for that is the flow of the canal was actually changed. We asked Canals and Rivers Trust to actually increase the flow rate through the canals because that's actually quite limited normally. And that's helped us to get a little bit of dilution in this section of the Birmingham Canal. Of course, not all waste fires are dealt with in the same way. On June the 16th, a major blaze broke out at Lawrence Recycling in Kidderminster. Here, it was treated very differently. When it comes to the environment, sometimes the fire service have to make some rather difficult decisions. In the case of this fire, after they'd brought it under control, they took the decision not to fight it anymore, but to actually let it burn, as that had less of an impact on the environment. 
To actually extinguish the fire now, it would involve large quantities of water and external firefighting using jets. Um, and the consequences of using large volumes of water is there's a high potential that that would run into the canal and therefore pollute the River Severn, which is downstream from this site. So all of our tactics have been based around trying to minimise the potential environmental impact. 16 days on and it's likely to be at least another two weeks before this fire is eventually extinguished. It's the second in six months here and those running the company feel the time has come for strong industry regulations. I think we would welcome the industry working with the services to actually take a step back and look at permitting, look at how you store the material, whether it's better indoors and outdoors, whether you actually need fire suppression systems within the facilities. I mean, all which had quite significant costs, but I think it's that balance of risk, uh, environmental impact and cost. Back at the scene of yesterday's fire and checks on the environmental impact continue. This time it seems they're minimal, but with waste fires on the increase, this is one threat that's unlikely to go away. Ben Sidwell, BBC Midlands Today, Smethwick. Well, for the very latest on the situation here in Smethwick, the Chief Fire Officer, Vidge Randonaya, is with me now. Uh, Vidge, we heard the government have stopped short of talking about a, a ban on lanterns. Is that something that you're disappointed to hear? I still think we're going to have a, a discussion with government. They've, I've spoken to the Minister today. They want us to write and express our view. You know, our view is quite firm about this. My view has changed over the last couple of days. You know, I was sort of fairly open-minded. Now, I do think that you know, if a mess like this can be caused by something that costs a couple of pounds, that can't be a good thing. Now, the General Secretary of the Fire Brigade Union has been to visit the site today. I mean, he's saying that really your response to this fire was compromised by government budget cuts to the fire service. Is that fair comment? Well, looking over to the left, you'll see a huge office uh, warehouse. Uh, that was saved by the, the skill of the firefighters of the West Midlands Fire Service. We are a, an outstanding organisation. We've been going through a bit of a tough time, but I've got every confidence in my firefighters that we can deliver great service as long as we're treated fairly by central government. But we have heard that you were literally down to one fire engine in the West Midlands. What if there'd been another big fire somewhere in your, in your area? Well, the way it works is that fire engines from all across the counties that surround us come in to support us, and that's true of, of, of that night, and that's, that's normal working. Uh, what we did was we released some of the vehicles from here, got those vehicles from Hereford and Worcester, Staffordshire and uh, Warwickshire in to support us on this incident. That is normal practice. OK, we've heard that there have been 15 fires like this in the West Midlands. Just very quickly, are, would you like there to be different regulations the way rubbish is stored? Well, I'd like there to be no fires in waste transfer stations. I mean, the regulations around this type of storage, I think, do need revisiting. But again, if, you, if this was a tyre storage dump, those regulations would suffice to reduce the risk. They'd be compartmented, they'd be drencher systems, and we could stop you know, incidents like this where my firefighters had to work so hard, happen so often. All right, thank you very much indeed. Well, the fire service are hoping to be away from the site by the end of tomorrow. Polly, thank you. Coming up later in the programme...